Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this glass box smoke simulation where two different colors combine to create this satisfying effect. Now you don't have to use the same colors I'm using, you can experiment and use whatever colors you want and I'll go through the process of how to do that. If you want to grab this blend file and all the other blend files I've ever created on this channel, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and delete the default cube and then press Shift A and add in a cylinder. This is going to be our flow object. In the properties tab by hitting N, let's set the X and Y down to around 0.5 and then the Z let's go down to 0.1. We'll jump into front view and then rotate this so it's sitting upright and then place it over on the left side right about there. Then for our domain object, let's add in a new cube, set the dimensions up to 3 meters and then we'll drag it up so it's sitting right on the grid floor. Before we duplicate this flow object and place it on the top right, let's set up all of the different settings. We're going to box select both of these and hit Ctrl A, apply the scale and apply the rotation so all of these numbers go back to 1. Then with the domain selected first, we're going to jump over to the physics tab, select fluid and switch the type over to domain. Down in the cache setting, let's set the type over to modular so we can actually bake this in. And then if you want to stop the bake halfway through to see how it looks, you can turn on is resumable. Then for the end frame here, let's go up to 300 frames. Up at the top here, the resolution divisions will set how good the smoke will look. Let's go up to 120. The time scale is the speed of the simulation. I want it to be a bit slower, so let's go down to 0.5. The CFL number, let's go up to four. This will help speed up the bake time just a little bit. And now the very important settings, we wanna make sure the border collisions is checked for every single side of our domain. So the smoke actually collides with the edges. Then we're gonna turn on adaptive domain. So the domain scales based on where the smoke is. We're gonna leave the default settings. We're gonna turn on dissolve and we're actually gonna animate this because I want the animation to be seamless I want the dissolve to happen and then the simulation will restart. Let's set the end frame in the timeline to 300. Then on frame 200 right here, we're going to uncheck dissolve and then add in a keyframe by hovering over your mouse over and hitting I. Then on frame 201, we're going to turn dissolve back on and then add in another keyframe. The time value, let's go up to around 20. This will give us a nice smooth uh, fade as the smoke dissolves. And the other thing we're going to do is set the vorticity here in the gas setting. Let's go up to 0.05 just so we have a little bit more swirls in the smoke. And that's basically all we really need to do. For the flow object, go ahead and select it, turn on fluid and switch the type over to flow. For the flow behavior, we're going to switch it over to inflow. And we're also going to do that exact same thing that we just did with the dissolve with this use flow. So on frame 200, we're going to add in a keyframe to the use flow. Over in the next frame, we're gonna turn off the use flow and add in another keyframe so it stops emitting smoke on frame 200. Now for the smoke color, here is where you're gonna set what smoke color that you want for your simulation. For this bottom flow object, I want the smoke color to be a nice blue. Somewhere around here will look pretty good. Then we're gonna set the initial temperature up to a value of two. This will allow the smoke to rise a bit faster. The density value, let's go up to 1.5. And then finally, we're gonna check initial velocity down here because I want the smoke to shoot out in the X direction along here. We're gonna set the initial X to a value of six. And the other thing I want to do is animate this. So as the simulation plays, I want this to speed up a little bit so more smoke is entering the domain. On frame 80, we're gonna add in a keyframe to the initial X. Then we're going to jump to frame 120, set the initial X to around 10, and then add in another keyframe. And that's basically all we really need to do for this flow object. Let's hit Shift D and place this one on the top right. For this smoke color, I'm going to go with a more purplish pinkish color. Somewhere around there will look pretty good. We're going to leave the animation for the use flow on frame 200, but we will need to change the X velocity right here. On frame 80, we're going to go with a negative value, negative 6. So the smoke actually shoots out in the negative x direction. Then we'll update that keyframe by clicking that button twice. On frame 120, let's set this to negative 10 and then update this keyframe once again. 
The other thing that we need to do is change the initial temperature here. With a positive value, all of the smoke is going to rise and hit the top of the domain, so we're going to be using a negative value. And for this, we're going to go with negative 5. This will allow all of the smoke once it gets emitted to drop down and then start mixing with the smoke that gets emitted from this first inflow. With that out of the way, we are ready to bake this in. So go ahead and select your domain. Over in the cache setting, you can set a custom directory to where all of your uh, smoke simulation data will be stored. Right now, it's set to a temporary folder, and that basically means that once you close Blender, the data will be deleted. So if you want to be able to open this project up later without having to rebake it, you can set a custom folder right here. I don't really need to do that though, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Bake Data. All right, the simulation has finished. Let's go through here and we can see the two colors and then they mix and it's looking pretty good. Now for this next part, we're going to be adding in the rest of the scene with some pipes sticking out of the domain, the glass box and all of that. So first off in front view, I'm going to hit Shift S and go cursor to selected and then we'll add in a new cube. This is going to be the glass box cube. In the dimensions, let's match the domain size, which is three. And then over in the modifier tab, let's add in a new modifier and select solidify. I'm gonna hit control A and apply the scale and then zoom in a little bit. And we want to make sure the edge right here matches right where the smoke is. So I'm just gonna bring up the thickness right about there is probably pretty good. And then maybe bring the offset up just slightly. To get that wireframe glow effect, we need to add in another modifier, generate, and use the wireframe modifier. Down here, we need to make sure replace original is not checked, because you can see here in solid view, with it checked, it deletes that face, but with it unchecked, it keeps that face. And that's important because this face right here will have that glass material. The other important thing you want to change is the material offset. Make sure that this is set to one. This allows the wireframe to have a different material than the base cube here. For the material, let's jump over to the material tab, create a new one, and this is gonna be the glass. Let's set the roughness to zero. And then in the transmission, let's go all the way up to one. Then for the light material, let's create a new one, click new, and switch it over to the emission shader. For the emission strength, let's go with a value of two, and I think that is perfectly fine. To make sure this works, let's go into the rendered view, and we can see that is working properly. Now, if you want to change the thickness of these lines over in the modifier tab, you can just bring down the thickness of the wireframe to something like that. I think that might look a little bit better. For the rest of the scene, let's press Shift A and add in a plane object. I'm gonna hit Alt G to snap it towards the center, and then we'll scale it up pretty big. Make sure it's below the cube. And then for this material, I'm gonna create a new one. The roughness, we're gonna go with 0.1. And then for the base color, we're just gonna go with a very dark black color, something like that. For the pipes that stick out of the domain, let's add in a new mesh cylinder. Rotate this cylinder 90 degrees, scale it down a little bit, and then place it right here covering up this flow object. Something like that will be good. Then in edit mode, I'm just gonna box select that side, drag it towards the left. And then with this face selected, I'm gonna hit I to inset, inset it slightly, and then just extrude it backwards. The material for this object will use that same black material that we just created. And then we'll duplicate this by hitting Shift D, rotate it around, and place it right here for the top flow object. The other thing we want to do is hide both of these flow objects, the first two cylinders, hide it from the view, and hide it from the render so they don't show up. That's looking pretty good. We don't need the default lamp. Let's go ahead and delete that. And then for the background, let's set this down to black. In front view, I'm gonna hit Control Alt and Numpad 0 to snap the camera to place. If you don't have a number pad, you can go up to View, down to Align View, and then select Align Active Camera to View. Here, we're gonna zoom outwards with middle mouse button, rotate this down a bit, and place the camera right about here. The other thing I wanna mention is I am using the Cycles Render Engine for this because I found that it looks a lot better than Eevee. So go ahead and switch over to Cycles, and now we can work on the smoke material. I'm gonna come up to the top right and split this view and switch it over to the Shader Editor. With the domain selected, which is the normal cube, we're gonna create a new material delete the principled shader, and then we're gonna add in a shader and then principled volume shader. Take the volume and plug it into the volume of the material output. 
Now at the moment we still can't see anything and that's because we need to add some emission to the smoke. To do this we're going to add in an input and then a volume info node. Take the density and plug it into the emission strength. Once we've done that, now we can see the smoke in our scene, and to bring the color in, we need to take the color attribute and plug that into the emission color. And there we go, we now have the colors brought into our material. One thing to note is the base color right here. This will affect the overall look of the smoke just slightly based on the density value. If this is up, it's really gonna change the look of the smoke. If you wanna use the same color as the flow objects, all you need to do is type in the word color right here and then enter, and now this should work properly. Let's also set this color to white. I'm gonna go back down to one density. The other thing I want to change is the brightness, and I also wanna give our smoke a little bit more detail. To change the brightness, we can add in a converter math node, place it over here, connected to the emission strength. If we switch it over to multiply, this bottom value now controls the overall brightness of our smoke. If we go up to 10, now we have a much brighter simulation. The other thing I want to do is add a bit of detail, and we can do that by adding in a new color ramp and placing it right here, connected to the multiply node. We're gonna add in a new handle right in the middle and switch this color all the way to white, and then the far right handle, this we're gonna switch down to black. If we skip to an early frame, you can really see what this is doing. If I zoom in right here, with this right handle selected, if I was to set it all the way to white, we can see all of that detail is now gone. But if I set it down to black, we get this really cool effect. Basically what this color ramp is doing is allowing the middle part of our smoke to have a bit more transparency. And you can really see this if I drag this right handle closer to the left, and now we're getting all of this crazy detail. We don't wanna to go too far though. I'm probably gonna go somewhere around here I think will be pretty good. And now that's giving us a really good look. Finally, if you want to add in some more density, what you can do is just duplicate this multiply node, take the color ramp, plug it in, and then plug this into the density. We'll set this value down to one, but now this color ramp is also affecting the normal density, which is allowing it to be slightly brighter. Finally, the very last thing that we'll do in this material is animate this multiply node. We can see here, if we jump all the way to the end frame, we can still see some smoke in our scene, and I don't really want that, I want it to be completely gone. So what we're gonna do is jump to frame 250 and we're gonna add in a keyframe over to this multiply node. Then at the very end of the simulation, frame 300, we're gonna set the multiply node down to zero and then add in another keyframe. So over 50 frames, all of the emission strength will go down to a value of zero and now it'll loop seamlessly once the animation restarts. And that's basically all we really need to do. From here, go ahead and close off this window then in the render tab, I'm gonna set the render samples to 50. Over here in the color management, I'm gonna set the look to high contrast. We can see here, if we jump to this frame, none, this is the effect, and then with high contrast, the colors pop a bit more. Then let's go ahead and do a quick render and then add in some glare afterwards. Once the render is done, you can hit escape and then jump over to the compositing workspace and select use notes. I'm gonna hit B a couple times to zoom out, and then right here, we're gonna add in a glare node. So press Shift A, filter, glare, and place it here. We're gonna switch it over to fog glow, and then for the highlights here, you can bring down the threshold, and that'll allow more glow to appear in your scene. I'm probably gonna go with a value of around 0.7. Then for the size, we can leave it here, or you could bring it up depending on what you want. The strength, you can also adjust if you want it to be not as strong, or have a full effect, I might go down slightly to around 0.8. And with that done, all you really need to do is set an output and then render out your animation. But there we go, that is how you create a dual colored smoke simulation in Blender. Thank you very much for watching. If you created something cool, feel free to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy, I would love to see it. If you have other tutorials you would like to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. And again, if you want to grab this blend file, the link for that is down in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.